love the Lord all over the building. Love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you turn your attention with me, reading from Acts chapter 27, verse 14. We will also be reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 14. Verse 26 and 27. Reading first from Acts chapter 27, verse 14. But not long after there arose against it a tempestuous wind called a Eurachlodon. And I've read this scripture just to make us familiar with the kind of storm that would come in the time that Paul was going here in his missionary journeys. And this tempestuous wind, this wind like a hurricane, this, this storm that was a Eurachlodon. So when I'm speaking about Eurachlodon as I preach here tonight, then understand it's this tempestuous storm, this strong winds, this real hurricane, tornado-like storms on the sea. And then from John chapter 14, again reading verse 26. John 14, verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. And verse 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. simply want to point out that Jesus speaks of the peace that comes through the power of the Holy Ghost. It's not really the peace like the world gives, but it's a different type of peace. And I simply want to preach for just a few moments peace in the midst of your Eurachlodon or peace in the midst of your storm. God bless you. You may be seated. In the Gospels we find the disciples went through at least two major storms during the Gospels, during the time when they were learning of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the first one you'll find is Mark 2 and Mark 3. We find that Jesus has ordained the disciples and has sent them to go out to preach the gospel and to heal the sick and to speak of the blessing of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And immediately after anointing them and giving them great authority and power, we find that they were sent to cross the sea. Mark 4 and also in Luke 8. Jesus sends them across the sea. It wasn't like they just decided to go across the sea on their own. This is where Jesus sent them. It was directly after an anointing. It was immediately after a great power came upon them. It was a exactly after they had done great things for the kingdom of God, Jesus sends them across the sea. And in their journey crossing the sea, the scripture said there arose a tempestuous wind. There arose a very terrible storm, a Eurachlodon upon the sea that they were crossing. Winds were like hurricanes. The waves became very large and the boat that they were in was even threatening to sink from all the water that had caused by the waves into the boat and they fear for their life but Jesus is in the boat with them he has been so tired from his ministry he is so exhausted from the virtue that has flowed from him that as this storm has come 
he finds himself, Jesus, in the hinder part of the boat, asleep. The wind is howling and Jesus is asleep. The waves are crashing and Jesus is asleep. Perhaps even now the water has made his pillow soggy. And still he is asleep from exhaustion. He is asleep trying to regain his strength from the virtue that is flowed from him. And finally, even though Jesus is exhausted and the disciples are trying to take care of the storm themselves, it becomes bigger than what they can handle. And so even though they know he's tired, even though he has been very exhausted, even though he has given himself and he needs sleep, they push all things else aside and they wake him up because the need is greater than even leaving him at rest. They wake him up and they have this question for him. Don't you care that we perish? Does it matter to you that we are giving everything we've got and it's not working? That we are bailing water out of this ship at the fastest pace we can and still the ship is sinking. Does it matter to you that we are about to die, that we are drowning here? And Jesus speaks to them of having little faith. He steps to the edge of their boat and speaks to the wind and speaks to the waves. Peace be still. And when He speaks the power and authority He has over nature, and the power and authority He has over the Eurachlodon, or the storm that they thought was the biggest thing they had ever faced, His power against the power of the storm seems so small. His authority so great against the authority of the storm seemed so small. When they waited to how fearful they were to how much power He demonstrates in the middle of their greatest storm, He is God. He is omnipotent. Nature subversive to His power. And now that He has spoken to the wind, be still, and to the waves calm down, it's like there was never a storm gentle breeze is perhaps blowing tranquil sea now placid now very still no storm whatsoever it's an amazing thing when Jesus can step to the edge of our boats of our life and he can speak peace into the midst of our storm and immediate peace he can speak to us of our finances and immediately things are changed. He speaks to us in our relationships and immediately things changed. It's an amazing thing when God speaks to us and there's an immediate change. There's an immediate effect. There's a peace that comes upon our life. Because He is the peace speaker. He is the peace speaker. Is He not the Prince of Peace? But then there are other storms that the disciples encountered. You'll find this in Mark 6, John 6, Matthew 14. Again, this comes immediately after a time of tremendous demonstration of power in the kingdom of God. For Jesus has just performed the miracle of feeding 5,000 with five loaves and two fishes. He has taken a lad's lunch blessed and break it and 5,000 have been fed and now Jesus sends them again across the sea this is not something they decided to do of their own volition or will Jesus sent them across the sea they are in the direction and they're in the will that Jesus sent them immediately after the power of the feeding of 5,000 now they're crossing the sea and sure enough, here comes another storm. And the Arachlodon is upon the sea. The winds are howling. The waves are crashing. But this time, Jesus is not in the boat with them. 
for he sent them along by themselves and he separated himself from them to find his own time of restoration his own time of prayer in the mountain top by himself and now the disciples are bailing water as the waves are crashing into the ship and the boat is taking on water they know they will sink any moment the wind has perhaps just torn the sails until they believe that there's nothing more they can do they will go down to the bottom of the sea they will find their last breath in this storm there's not even Jesus in the ship with them to wake up and to speak peace be still this time he sent them into a storm He's not with them. But in the midst of their struggling, in the midst of their hurt, in the midst of their confusion, they look out in the middle of their storm and they see walking upon the storm a ghost-like figure. Speculation soon turns that this must be Jesus. This must be the master of the sea. This must be he that speaks to the wind and waves. If he can speak to nature and it can change, then perhaps he can walk upon what he has authority over. And so they began to speculate that it's Jesus. Simon Peter calls out, to the Lord as he walks upon the waves as he defies the wind if that's you Lord bid me come the famous story of Simon Peter walking on the water Matthew 14 verse 28 Jesus simply says come step out of that place where you feel like you're drowning Get out of that little place where you feel like is your last shred of hope. Move past that boat where you feel like your little bit of safety is and step out in the middle of what you feel like is making you drown. Step out in the middle of where I have authority even if there's no peaceful sea, even if there's no peaceful wind. Step out in the middle of storm in your faith and see what will happen. Simon Peter steps out of the boat and begins to walk upon the water with the same seemingly authority that Jesus has with seemingly the same power that the Lord has Simon Peter at the bidding walks in great faith in authority and power over the storm in his life but as he begins to look around at the storm and perhaps realize his own humanity perhaps realize his own flesh and that he is not perfect. Looking around at the enormity of what he is doing in the supernatural, his eyes off of Jesus, he begins to see. Crying out to be saved, the Lord takes him by the hand. And immediately they are in the boat. The calm, the sea has once again peace speaker in the ship he that's above nature has calmed their storm again. sometimes Jesus steps to the edge of our boat and he speaks them powerful words peace be still and everything changes in our life but there are other times that he will send us out in his will in his purpose and the storm comes and he doesn't speak peace but rather he just gives us strength in the midst of the storm he allows us to have faith to operate in the supernatural in the middle of the storm without removing the storm from our life John 14, 27. 
text we read in the gospel. Jesus declares this about the power of the Holy Ghost that comes to our life. That it will be a peace that He gives us through this Holy Ghost. But it's not a peace like the world gives. But it's a peace that He gives. If you was to look up peace in the dictionary, you would find several definitions, but over and over, the definition is simply this. The absence of conflict. The absence of war. The absence of storm. The absence of battle. It means there is no storm. That's what peace is. It means there is no tempestuous wind. That's what peace is. It means there is no battle, there's no fighting, there's no struggle. It's peace. But that is man's definition of peace. But Jesus has a peace that's not like the world's peace. It's a peace that even in the midst of a storm, there's calm. The wind is still blowing, but I can have faith in the supernatural. The waves are still crashing, but I can have faith in my walk with God. The problems are still all around me, but there's a calmness in my spirit because it's not the lack of being a storm and it's not the absence of a... It is peace in the midst of my storm. This is the peace that passes all understanding because the world doesn't understand this. That when our nation or our world might be in an economic downturn, we're still perhaps in the midst of that financial storm, but we're operating in faith to be able to give supernaturally. There still might be a lot of fear all around us concerning the economy, but we have confidence in God's economy in our life. We have a faith and we have a trust. We have a peace. It is one of the greatest testimonies of what God is in our life. That it's not just He removes every hurt from our life. And it's not just that He removes every storm from our life. He can and He does at times. But even in the midst of the storm that He does not remove, there's still a So even if I'm still struggling in certain relationships, there's still a confidence and a peace in the Holy Ghost that God is directing my steps, that He knows the way that I take, and He will bring blessings to my life. But even if I'm dealing with sickness in my body, I still have a great understanding that he is my great physician and that He knows the path I take and every hair of my head is numbered. He loves me with an unending love. And no matter what the storm comes and what the storm brings, if He so chooses, if He so chooses not to speak peace and erase my storm, then I know that He will give me authority to walk on top of the problems. That I know that He will bid me, if my faith will reach out, He will bid me in the midst of this time of trouble and storm to step out and walk on top of the problems that are in my life. Comforter, which is the paraclete, the comforter, the Holy Ghost, that consoler, the witness that He is into our life gives us peace in the midst of the storm. I felt so strong in the Holy Ghost to preach this simple message tonight because there's precious people here that are in the midst of your Eurachlodon. And you've reached out in great faith for the Master of the Sea 
You've reached out in great prayer intercession for the speaker of the wind. But this time, He has not erased your problems. And this time, He has not just spoken peace and everything has changed. This time, there's a dimension of faith He's asking us to walk in, even in the midst, in the middle, in the continuance of our storm. But I can tell you this, that if you will have a faith like Simon Peter, you can walk in peace, in authority, and in power, even while your storm is going on. I feel to speak this prophetically, that the greatest revival that this nation and our community has ever seen is right now in the middle of some of our nation's most trying times that they've ever experienced. That we have the opportunity to walk in authority for the harvest, to walk in authority for revival, to walk in authority even for financial blessing like we never have because God's purpose is upon us. And even if he chooses not to remove it, there's a peace that is a testimony. Amen. Can I ask you to stand with me? Thank you, Jesus. And as you stand, would you join me in the front here? Just, just come join me and stand in the front. I'm going to ask the Lord to just bid us to come we're, we're, we're going to ask the Lord in the middle of everything that we're facing in the middle of all the troubles in the middle of all the circumstance we're, we're just going to say if that's you Lord if you have sent us here if you are directing our steps like your word says if you are leading us and guiding us then, then bid us to have faith in the midst of this storm and let us walk with great authority in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Oh, yeah, yeah. In the name of Jesus. Oh, yeah, yeah. In the name of Jesus. 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 <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. You heard his truth, oh God. You heard his truth, oh God. Jesus name. In Jesus. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Ha ha. Ye ta rele bo she to ro bo ro do ko ta la bai. Ha ra na ta la ba da ya. Ye re te le bo ko ro do she to la bo ro do ko. Jesus. 